What's up y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Nina, and I hope you guys are taking good care of yourselves. And happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers and those who are mothering. And today, I really wanted to delve into a topic that you all asked me a lot about, my experiences with plastic surgery. And though I haven't had many procedures, I'm still gonna be open and honest with you all and share with you all anything that I know that can help you from my own experiences. And I realize a lot of us have a lot of time to sit in the house right now and think about our past and our future and where we headed. And ain't no shame in the game of making changes that you think will be beneficial for you. Now, a big one that I had done was a breast reduction. And I had this done at 19 years old. And some will call this a cosmetic surgery or plastic surgery or even a reconstructive surgery. But mine was performed by a plastic surgeon. And I did this before my over 100 pound weight loss. Now, for those of y'all that don't know, it's done to remove the extra tissue and fat from the breast in order to reshape it and reduce the size of it. And baby, we needed to reduce the size because I was a 35H. You hear me? 35H. Overly large or even sagging breasts can cause us a lot of issues to our backs, our necks, and our shoulders. And it can also cause us emotional problems if we don't like the size of them or if we're trying to hide them or if we don't feel confident with them. And many of you all ask me about this process in particular because you're either going through a weight loss journey or you're thinking about starting one, but you want to know if you want to have a breast reduction before or after or any augmentation before or after your weight loss. Now today I'm going to share with you my full burst reduction story, some pros, some cons, and some tips, and some things you might want to look into before making the decision, or if you already have, and what you might expect. If you have a story of any surgeries that you've had, make sure that you share them down below. Y'all know I have other videos on this topic, so make sure you check those out. But we're going to go ahead and get into this. And y'all, don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment, share, and subscribe. And also click on those notification bells so you can know when I upload on Thursdays and Sundays. Make sure you also check out my Now That's Life podcast, which is now live. And you can check it out on all your major podcasting platforms. Links to my podcast can be found down below in the information section. So let me go ahead and give y'all a little bit of background on me and my, my boobs. Now, I was pretty small until my breasts got larger around the age of 14. It's like they went from nothing nothing to a from a training bra all the way up to like a 34 35 d as in dog it's like everything for me happened all at once which was devastating in itself i feel like at 13 i started my period and then at 14 like these things just erupted from this chest of mine. They continued to get larger and as I got older in high school, I started to gain a little bit of weight as well. It was really hard to play sports and I felt like people were always pointing out how large they were. Try running with big boobs. It's hard. I couldn't wear most of the clothes or shirts that I wanted to wear. I spent a lot of time trying to cover them up or finding ways to conceal them. And it was even causing those dark marks, those bra marks in my arms and my shoulders that were making extra dark bruises and indentations in my shoulder area. And that just wasn't cute. And don't worry, I plan to do a video of how I got rid of those indentations and how I got rid of a lot of that bruising as I lost weight. By my first year of college, y'all, they got so annoying and very painful. Like I really wanted to hide myself all the time or conceal myself or wear something over it. Like put a sheet or a bag on me. I just felt like all you saw was boobs. My mom and I had decided that I would go see a doctor over like my Christmas break and then over spring break, my first year of college, that I would have the surgery performed. So let's talk a little bit about the process it took to get me on the operating table. Now my mother already worked in the healthcare field so she understood how to research doctors and understand their certifications and their licensures and all of that stuff. But one of the bigger things was understanding where the money was coming in. Now breast reductions can sometimes be covered under your insurance carrier especially if the doctor deems it necessary. And something you need to know is that breast reductions cost more than breast implants. Yes it costs more to take them out than it does to put them in. Actually my breast reduction costs $15,000 or more. The average cost of breast implants is between somewhere from, depending on the surgeon, $4,000 to $9,000. So my insurance covered all of the surgery except for something like 10%. So my mother covered that 10%. And we also checked the reviews of the doctors and looked at different people. Remember, this ain't Yelp, y'all. You ain't looking for your nearest meal. And they should be board certified in cosmetic and plastic surgery. And they should definitely have a number of surgeries in the area of the surgery that you're looking to get. You may request 
request any professional reviews or even before and after photos before you allow them to cut on your body. Seek a full out consult with them and listen to the words that they say and what they tell you when you ask questions. They should be honest with you and tell you your other options other than surgery. My doctor was so brutally honest with me and she let me know that if I were to get pregnant in the future and have a child, I would not know until it came time to have that child whether or not I would be able to breastfeed because of the nature of the breast reduction. And so I had to be honest and realistic with her about my wants and my needs and see what she thought would be necessary or even if she could take me on as a patient. My doctor was also real with me and straight up with me about any expectations I had versus the realities. And one of the things being scarring, if you have a serious surgery, you can expect there to be some scars. Many of them can be concealed and a lot of plastic surgeons are very highly skilled at their job. So they know how to conceal these things and make them look better, but you shouldn't expect to get up off the table and not see anything like you haven't had surgery. So y'all, after I met with my doctor and built a relationship with her, she did decide that I was a good candidate for the surgery. Now she thought that it was taking a toll on me more physically, but even more so emotionally. And even though I was heavier, she didn't foresee any complications and thought that the risks of the surgery did not outweigh the benefits. But y'all should know that most surgeons will not operate on those that are heavily obese or those that have a lot of health complications because they want to avoid a lot of other complications. So my doctor did suggest and checked that I lost about 10 pounds. She thought that this would help to equalize me. And she also could check the breast to ensure that her thought that most of the breast was tissue instead of fat was the truth. And sure enough, even after losing weight, I still had all breast tissue. We was real breasty over here. So while we're talking about the candidate, who's a good candidate for this surgery? Women who are having back, neck, and shoulder pain due to the size of their breasts. If you have one breast that's larger than the other, I know somebody that had that one done. If you haven't found any comfort from wearing even those very wide soft straps and you're still getting the digging into the skin or even if you've sought therapy for that or any other kind of therapies in order to get help and it's still not working. And even for men who haven't responded well to exercise or even medications to reduce the size of their breasts. And my doctor was so cold, baby. She even sat me down and talked to me about the different types of reconstructive surgeries for my breasts and what would work best for me. So there's the anchor reduction, the vertical version, and the scar. Now I went with the anchor version, which is the most intrusive, but I had to. And basically what happens with that, just to demonstrate for you guys, because I can't really show it here. I have added some links down below for you guys so you can learn more about the process. But basically what they do is they cut a hole. They cut your nipple off, literally. They cut down the middle of the breast and underneath the breast like an anchor. It literally is shaped like an anchor. And what they do is they take out the breast tissue and the fat from the bottom, whatever they need to. And then they they lift the breast and replace the nipple up higher, which is your breast lift, and then they sew you back up. Sounds fun, right? There's the vertical version, which is for smaller breasts, and you don't have to go with the full anchor, the circle and down, and they'll take it out. And there's the scarless, which is more liposuction, which is for thinner people who literally just have mostly fat in the breast that are making them bigger, and they just want that fat removed. So the anchor, it was for me. So let's discuss the surgery. The surgery took about three to four hours, and they removed over five pounds of pure breast tissue. Then they also had to do liposuction across the sides because you can't remove the bulk of the breast without handling the sides of the body because it will look disproportionate. And that's to reduce any rippling or bulky fat areas. Now I also had drains put in after the surgery so that they were able to drain the fluid from the liposuction and the surgery. And y'all, that was the part that hurt. I also had to have a catheter in. So that was not fun at all. If y'all know what a catheter is, go ahead and Google it right now. It's basically a tube that goes up to collect your urine while you're sleeping or while you're going about your day. Some people have to wear a catheter all day, but let me tell you, it is not the most comfortable thing in the world. I was groggy and tired after the surgery, which took place at like five o'clock in the morning. And I was there all day and spent the night and was able to go home the next day. The pain wasn't so unbearable because I was able to get up and walk. I asked them, could I walk, sit up and watch television, do the things that I wanted to do with in the hospital and I was still kind of mobile. So it wasn't like I was totally 
out of it. So let's go ahead and talk about that good old recovery. Now, you know, recovery for me was important because I had my surgery performed over spring break and I still had to go back. And it takes about six to eight weeks, or for me, it took about a full six to eight weeks to fully recover. But after about a week, you good. You like can walk around and do all of that, but you can't do a lot of other things that you used to. First off, I was really concerned about the scars and the wounds. I wanted to make sure that I didn't scar too badly. I knew there would be scars because that's realistic, but I didn't want it to be too bad. That's when I started using Mederma. I know I'm always talking to you guys about Mederma and the power of it for removing dark marks. I know because I had whole scars in the shapes of anchors on my body. And while they're still there, they're much more faint in their presentation now. Not only that, they didn't puff out in keloid as much. Now, while I can say some of that was genetics, it was also aftercare because you cannot care and they can look a certain way. But I really did care and took good care of those scars. And there's no real bending of the body or raising the arms because you don't want to re-tear the area. So when I came home, I had like a harness bra that I had to wear. It kind of bandaged you in and I think I had to wear that for a while. Of course, you have to change out the bandage and the gauze and you have to take care of the area. But one of the things I had to do was to make sure that I wore that because it really does help with the shape and formation of the breast. It also helps them to heal properly. There's no heavy lifting, no rigorous exercise or activity. I had to sleep elevated on pillows for a while and surrounded by pillows so that I didn't feel the urge to lay on my chest at night. I had to go back for a checkup after about four to six weeks for before and after photos to see the progress and also to see if there was any swelling. And I even did have just a little bit of tearing at the bottom of my left breast, but that did heal over time. But some of the things you might experience include bruising, swelling, discomfort, and even some temporary numbness, specifically around the nipple area. It took a little while for my nipples to get a lot of feeling back. And that was something that I had to learn to deal with because your chest or your boob could be out <laughs> and you might not even feel it. It took a little while, but I did get the feeling back. So let's go over some of the realistic expectations and what I actually got. Well, like I told you guys, I won't know if I can breastfeed until I conceive and until I give birth to a child. So that was a gamble in itself. And I've actually had some friends that were able to produce milk after having a breast reduction and they were just fine. I had relief from the physical discomfort and the back pain and the pains from rounding my back because my breasts were so big. Improvement in the size and shape of the breast, honey. You know, having that breast lift was everything. There's a more natural looking cleavage and shape to the breast. Breasts get brought in to be more proportionate with the rest of the body. So if you have a good doctor, they're not gonna take you all the way down. They're gonna look at what looks best for your body. There was a boost in confidence and quality and comfort of life as well. I was actually able to exercise and run without feeling like my breasts were gonna fall off my chest. I love the results and I did learn that the results are permanent unless you lose or gain a lot of weight, which for me became a factor because I lost over 100 pounds. So what happened with that? So my weight loss took place about three years later. So I had pretty much settled into the new size of my breast. But when I lost the weight, I'll have to admit, I do wish I had have waited on getting the reduction until after. Now my breast would have still been big and my doctor made that clear. And in fact, made a joke that I probably would have been working for Hugh Hefner because they still would have been big. So even after my surgery, I gained more weight before I lost the weight three years later. And so I can see say that it was a huge difference because them things was flat. Do you hear me? Super flat. I had to exercise and do weight lifting and weight training and body weight training in order to get a more shapely look to them. And y'all, they also sit extra high, which I kind of like, but it is an interesting thing to see because it probably would have been a little bit different had I waited until I lost a lot of the weight. So I would suggest losing most of the weight you would like to before going into the surgery procedure. So what are my thoughts on exact pros and cons? The pro is you can finally walk around without having around your back and your shoulders and everything hurting and tense like you done had a huge hit workout every day and all you're doing is carrying your boobs. The reduction really did help to add to a boost in my self-esteem because I felt like I had less hanging on me that I didn't want there. It just literally made me walk lighter and prouder. Performing daily functions and fitness schedules was like a breeze after that. I mean, I could actually move around and even though I gained weight after that, I still didn't feel super heavy in the chest area. And now y'all, medicine
medicine has advanced. And so a lot of doctors are learning ways to really preserve the milk ducts and making sure that women can still produce milk and breastfeed. But some of the cons are if it's not done right, it can cause a lot of infections, scarrings, and issues. Y'all with the recovery period, I'ma be honest, it's hard to do things like even taking showers. You have to watch what you're doing with the breast because they are sensitive and they could reopen, in fact, at the incision places. So you have to be very careful. So even taking a shower can be tedious. And breast reductions come with risk. You know, like I said, the nipples can be more numb and might not even retain their full feeling after you're done with all of this. And sometimes people have problems with the scars. And another thing is considering the whole idea of maybe not even being able to breastfeed after such a procedure, you're gonna lose some of the sensitivity in your nipples and you might lose the ability to produce milk at a high level in order to keep your baby satisfied. So all of these things have to be thought about. So overall, am I happy? And what are my future plans for my body? I am super happy, baby. Them things was a job. For me, in my situation, it wasn't working out. I like to be somewhat athletic and now I like to be super athletic. It was really hard on me and I didn't like it. And I also found myself slouching all the time or trying to keep people from looking at that area. It just wasn't for me. Now, I do still wish that maybe I had waited a little longer into my weight loss process, but I didn't know I was gonna lose all that weight three years later I was actually happy and okay with myself for a while at that time so it wasn't that big of a deal but I did continue to gain weight so that was where I knew I needed to lose now in the future I do plan to have a child or two you know God says the same and I do plan to have fat transfer so now that my boobs have already been lifted what I plan to do is I want to have the fat taken out of wherever it can be taken out of and pumped into the breast to lift and fill them at a nice rate so I can use my own body tissues to fill up the breast. So that's my future plan. So I hope this video has been beneficial for you guys, especially those of you all considering any kind of plastic surgery, but more specifically the reconstructive nature of the breast reduction. If you have your own story, please share it with me down below and let us know some of the things that you've been through and you have done in terms of your body. Ain't no shame over here. Now make sure you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Special thanks to Jason Bowie of Trinity Media Solutions for co-producing and filming today's video. His information can be found down below in the information section. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.